All right, so um, in this video, I'm going to kind of show you a little bit about using uh, digital measures uh, to enter information and then to kind of proofread what's entered in in terms of what someone might see when they run a report using digital measures. And so I record this video just to kind of show you a few of the things that I discovered um, in entering information into digital measures and some of the discrepancies that you see when you run uh, a report. So this video kind of assumes that you've been adding information under all of these activity sort of tabs. And so, you know, there's all these tabs in here that you can enter information. And um, so, for example, you might have a presentation or a poster that you did and you go in and you enter it in. So what you want to try to do in this video is to figure out how to run a report and what someone might see when they re run a report on you. And to do that, you just go up to Run Custom Reports. And then what you want to do is go to select the report to run on and go to Annual Review, because this is probably the most common report that's going to be uh, written or run on you when you do an Annual Review. So click on Annual Review. And then the really important thing you want to do is select the age range to use. So we're going to do one for this last year. So um, from uh, 2004 to uh, 2015. You can select the file for it. Just keep it as Microsoft Word and select the page size. And then you click on Build Report. So this will then generate a Microsoft Word document that then you can open up and take a look and see uh, what the report kind of looks like. So here's kind of a quick report. And you can go through and see if it captured uh, the information that you're hoping that it would capture that you've entered it in. And you'll note one thing when you run a report is that a lot of the information you didn't you entered in may not necessarily appear on this. So if you want to be fairly thorough, one of the things you can do is you can select on details on how this report is built. And if you click on that, it's going to download another Microsoft Word document. And you click on that, and you open up that document. This is the script that's run to pull the information from the database that's used to generate the annual report. And one of the nice things about this is you can go through and look at uh, what's been um, entered in and just double check and see if it's something that um, that you want to appear or not appear in your reports and just sort of make sure it's capturing everything. So this kind of helps you sort of gauge what sort of things to put in and how it will appear in an annual report. Um, it's almost easier just to run a bunch of reports and just correct it and sort of proofread it and add things in. So I want to show you an example that I ran into and some problems in entering publications. Um, not appearing or appearing out of order. So if you go down to publications, I had a number of publications that were going or sort of in review or been submitted um, and they haven't been published yet and so I wanted them to appear in my annual reports but they haven't been published but they've been submitted or under review. So one of the things that you need to do when you do this is you go in here and um, for a lot of these, you want to, even though it's, um, you want to indicate its um, status. So, in preparation, working paper submitted, revised to submit, not accepted, accepted, published. If you indicate that it's been published, it should appear in the report, but we'll have to check the dates as well. But you can also put in preparation, not yet submitted, or a uh, working paper, and this will be listed under it not being published. But when you go down to the bottom where it asks the publish date, you need to specify a date in this field, even though it's not published. Um, so for example, in this one, it's been submitted uh, submitted on the 30th of 2014, but it wasn't appearing in my annual report because this date hadn't been filled out. But if I fill this out as date published, it'll say 2014. And so when you run the report, on this, what you'll see is for that particular one that's not yet published but has been submitted, we can go down and, and see that it is um, 
selected into Intellectual Contributions Not Yet Published, and you can see that it's listed there under that category with the 2004 date, and that's because that's the published date you put it in. Even though it's not published, you add that 2014 date, that will allow it to be in the annual report. And that way you can have things that are not yet published uh, appear in your annual report. Things that then are published um, that you might have. So down here I have, let's see, where's my... Here's one that's published. So this is published intellectual contributions. And then you can see it being listed. And this one has been published. So that splits those out. And so you have to enter in a uh, publication uh, date even on things that are not published so that they appear in the annual report as things not yet published, which is kind of a, a little confusing. So by, by pulling up these reports using this form here, you can sort of troubleshoot how things appear on your annual reports. And I hope this little demo uh, will help you out in sort of formatting your own reports.